welcome to week 35 yes and hopefully the last week hopefully although uh, we are due to go in the water on thursday and i don't know whether we're going to make it to be perfectly honest uh, but we are very 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 nearly there which is the most exciting. Yeah, we are very focused on finishing all the little jobs yes. because that's all about now, isn't it? Little jobs. It really. is, it is. It's all the little bits around the edges which are actually better done out of the water than in the water, but we'll see how we get on. But we did have a bit of a disaster over the weekend. Yeah, we came over the weekend to fill up the tanks with water and we had a leak. We had four leaks actually. Yeah, we had four leaks. So three were easy to fix. Three were easy to fix, so we just saw like, like pipe fittings or Jubilee clips which weren't quite tight enough. And um, we fixed those. But the, uh, the other one was where the filler pipe comes into the tank and the tank holds around about 1,800 litres of water. There's quite a lot of water in there, but when we filled it up to the top, the fitting that goes onto the uh, tank uh, was actually leaking. So uh, the first job today is to get that fitting off, which means taking the floor out um, along the starboard side and uh, getting it sealed up and fixed. Mm. It's a big job, isn't it? It's uh, disappointing, let's put it that way. Yeah. Yeah. And you start dismantling the boat, it's not good. I know, good. it's not good, it's not good. But anyway, uh, we're going to stay, try and stay positive all week. Uh, the mast is coming on very well. If you haven't seen the mast, which you probably haven't seen the mast, no. but the mast is coming on very well. Beautiful. And Simon did a beautiful woodwork. Yep, yeah, that's, that's good. And uh, hopefully um, we'll nearly be there. That's when you say, and you did a beautiful paintwork. You did beautiful paintwork, darling. <laughs> So we've just uh, put the throttle cables on and the gear gearbox cables so that uh, it, we had all this bit missing we had to uh, get it from uh, Vitas. Uh, anyway there we go, it's just a getting ready for everything. You have about two meters on this side. Can they be curled up behind here? They can. Okay, so this is a Saturday before we go in the water and uh, one of the things I have to do is to make a signal mast. The boat needs a little mast at the front. Uh, it's ready so you can run the, put your pennants on and things like that, but also it's for the navigation light, the steaming light and the anchor light. So I don't want to spend an awful lot of money on this. Uh, they can be rather expensive. And so what I've decided to do is to make one out of this sheet of uh, plywood. It's uh, 19 mil thick and I'm going to laminate it up three times uh, to give me a total uh, thickness of 57 millimeters and then the base is going to be thicker again I'm then going to sand it or make it all round and uh, make it into a slight curve as well so it looks really nice um, that's that's my task uh, so it's going to be a sort of uh, two or three day project and eventually it'll get painted and uh, be painted the same color as the boat so uh, anyway here we go this uh, piece of plywood is 62 centimeters wide so I'm going to cut it into st three strips of uh, 20 20 uh, centimeters, 200 mil to start with, and then that's going to be the sort of main frame of it, the shape, the size. Now, my mast needs to be 
1,300 millimeters high, 1.3 meters. Uh, that's so that the top of the mast is just above the height of the uh, coach roof, uh, the pilot house, uh, the solar panels on top, so that on top of the mast will be the anchor light and that will give you 360 degree light all the way round. It also means that if I hit a bridge with that, I have to stop before I get to the pilot house. So 130. It also means that the steaming light, which will be underneath the mast, uh, the, the anchor light, will actually be above the port and starboard one, which is the right configuration. Another one, absolute flood. It was the biggest flood you could ever have. I, I was filling up the um, <clears throat> with the cool uh, the the coolant, coolant antifreeze, coolant, antifreeze, and was just going liters and liters and liters and liters. And at some point, when I looked out, it was coming a river down on the bilge, <laughs> and it filled the bilge up in the engine room. I mean, there must have been what, forty liters. 30 litres? 30 litres. 30 litres of coolant in the bottom of the boat. Mm. This is a little job I'm doing is I'm having to change the standard 16 amp plug socket, <laughs> trailing socket, right? These cost about seven pounds, right? And I've had to change it to the Victron energy socket, which is completely different style. And this is, uh, on the discount, it was over 60 quid, wasn't 60 it? Pounds, yeah. Yeah. And I have to say, it's rubbish. It's the cheapest bit of plastic. Um, the where all the cable entries go in is just one flat head screw. Whereas these, they nearly always have two screws to grip the cable. And I think it's appalling. But it's the only one that fits the socket, the plug, the chassis plug on the boat. So I'm I'm really disappointed, and I feel a bit ripped off. Victron Energy, thank you. It's, <laughs> it doesn't even. It just. Cheap crap plastic, you know. It's there's nothing nice about it at all. Okay. Anyway, back to the story about yeah. the uh, our builders. disaster. Yeah. So Simon went out and went to ask Charlie to take the generator off. Well, there's this big cooling uh, pan. So um, the water goes round the engine, through the engine, and then it goes into this big. Uh, it's about um, two and a half meters long by about a meter high and around about uh, this thick, about three or four inches thick. And the water passes through there, it's a skin on the hull, and um, that cools the water. The water underneath the boat cools the water inside the engine thing. Anyway, this thing, you, you just filled it up and kept filling it. Yeah. You didn't stop, did you? No. no. And then I said, where are you going? He said, I'm going to call Charlie to take the take job. That meant taking all the flooring out. I know, out. it did, it did, it did. You know, destroy yeah. the boat, basically, isn't it? Well, okay. Disassembling but the This boat. thing must have been leaking. We couldn't get to it to have a look, you see. It must have been leaking. <laughs> and we... we, we he said, you're not going anywhere. We're going to investigate so this we thing. got the phones out and, and did all this business yeah. to try and look behind it. Mm -hmm. And then we couldn't find anything. So we said, right, well, let's put some more water in and see where it's coming out. And we found a breather hole where uh, we'd hidden it with some uh, insulation, insulation for the engine room and it was to let the air out when you fill it up and then you just put a bolt back in it. Oh, cracky. That's just despair. <laughs> what a disaster. Oh, it was just the end of the world, really. It you was a three hours lost on our day, wasn't it? Well, it was a whole day written off, wasn't it? Mm. But we've worked out now, we've actually got five days' work to finish. Yeah, we were supposed to go in the water today, Thursday. But we're not. But it's not going to happen. No. I'll just put a screw in there. I'm going to put another screw in about here. Okay, so I get this bit of wood, bend round it like that, 
and draw a line. So these are my two navigation lights. This is my steaming light, which is a 180 degree white light. And this is my anchor light, which is a 360 degree white light. So this one's gonna go at the top. This one has to fit on a little platform here at the top of the mast. And this one has to be down around about here. So I'm actually gonna build something into the mast to uh, put a little platform onto. That's my idea. And this one wants to be about here. One of the great things about using plywood like this is you can actually see, you can follow the grains along in the, in the ply and see where you've cut more away or more or less and uh, try and get them all in a straight line. It's very good. So the next thing I'm going to do is I've taken it actually uh, apart again. So it's in all its individual pieces and I've got the sex center section here on the bench and I'm going to route a hole all the way down a channel all the way down the center of the uh, section so that I can get the cables up there and out to the lights in the top. There we go. So this goes to the uh, steaming light, this one goes up to the anchor light. It's not the best for a bit of routing in the world, but um, my router blade was a bit was very blunt. Yeah. So I just mixed up some epoxy and added in some uh, West System 486, which acts as a sort of uh, glue, it's a sort of white uh, mucky stuff, powder. And uh, I mixed that up, five to one, and uh, I'm just uh, painted it on and I'm uh, screwing it together. So that's the next step. We sanded the mast and uh, filled it in all the little bits of crevices and things like that. And so Carla's going to paint it. And what we have here is um, the, exactly the blue paint. Uh, it's a two pop uh, paint, um, epoxy paint, uh, exactly the same blue as the boat. And um, we're going to mix this up two to one and uh, go with it. Do you want me to do it? Yeah, you do it. You'll be better than me. Okay, 50. Okay, 50. Now this blue is Volkswagen Sapphire Blue. <laughs> it's actually a proper car colour, which yeah. is a classic. Classic. I know it's nothing new, but it's so good to see you. We do this every day, and I'm still so amazed by you. So hold me tight through the night mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's just us two, me and you mm -hmm. 
is the map. It's uh, beautiful. But I'm still gonna do. Um, I'm gonna sand again and paint again to give uh, even better finish. But it's beautiful. Every single